Dusk is a fantastic game. I can make an entire series on everything it does right if I wanted to go in depth. And I might just do that. But what I want to get into today is the very first encounter. You see, Dusk is a 90s FPS release in modern day. It's a throwback to games created before I was even born, and yet I'm still in love with it. Before I played Dusk, my only ref retro FPS experience consisted of Quake 3, Live, and a mobile port of Doom. However, after playing and loving this game, I played Doom 2, Quake, Blood, Strife, Thief, Half-Life, and a proper source port for Doom 1, and many others. Dusk is a gateway to its inspirations, and it brings new people like me to older games. It perfectly represents the old, and yet it's accessible for bringing in new players. Sure, I was already interested in 90s games before, but Dusk made it my favorite genre, and encouraged me to try a lot of older experiences. But being accessible, Dusk gets people hooked on the genre and, after they know what it has to offer, more willing to learn the quirks of older games. But how does it do this? 90s FPS's have a lot of aspects and skills that you may not understand if you've only played modern games. Movement is a big one, as you will need to know how to strafe jump if you want to survive a lot of encounters. For me, this isn't as big of a deal. As a Quake Live player, although not a very skilled one, I had a background knowledge on more advanced movement and strafe jumping. But for someone that has never learned something like strafe jumping, they could play through the game without knowing how to use Dusk's amazing movement mechanics, which, as I said, are sometimes needed. First, Dusk simplifies strafe jumping, but in a good way. Instead of needing to have mouse movements and constantly switching movement keys, Dusk's movement is much more straightforward. Just hold two directions and keep pressing jump. Switch directions to keep a straight line. No need for looking up a tutorial or having someone explain it to you. Dusk movement is easier to discover for yourself in game, as well as crucial to the entire experience. But still, someone that's used to modern FPS probably won't try doing that. Jumping diagonally isn't something one will think of unless they're used to retro FPS. Dusk relies on this mechanic heavily. They need to have the player know the skill right from the start. They need something to teach the player the basics and ins and outs of movement without needing a tutorial and without chance of fail or can jeopardize the player's entire experience the whole game. Dusk manages to do this in seconds. The very start pits you up against three chainsaw cultists, where movement is crucial to survival. If you don't take advantage of speed, they can quickly surround you. This will probably trigger an instinctive jump back in order to quickly launch yourself away from danger, and from this the player will recognize the sheer amount of speed this grants them. Because you only have sickles at this point of the game, you will need to get close to the cultists in order to do any damage. You will have to perform the same jump back multiple times in order to avoid their chainsaw attack, further planting the idea of why and how to use the speed. From this standpoint, it is very likely that the player will incorporate these skills and learns full strafe jumping, which will benefit them throughout the game. This genius design teaches the player how to play the game without any prompts or tutorials, but it isn't too vague either. Dusk is a beautifully designed game that anyone remotely interested in 90s FPS should play. Whether you've been playing since Wolfenstein, or if you've never played one in your life, do yourself a favor. Go to notfortnite.com and buy Dusk. It's such a rush, and if you're still on the fence, I've linked some GGG Man reviews down below. But do beware, they do contain some spoilers. Have fun, and thank you very much for watching.